What is going on ladies and gentlemen, it is Kevin with Optimized Decentrals and in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about meditation, the best way to build your self-discipline and willpower. Now, okay, if you guys are like me, I'm sure you've struggled a lot with changing, with disciplining yourself, with wanting to exert self-control, yet for some reason you just can't seem to shake off the bad habits or make the changes that you've want you've wanted to you know all along um, a little quick backstory on how meditation helped me how it changed my life is this i used to be an avid video gamer a video uh, ad, avid pot smoker right i was addicted and hooked on video games and pot and other behaviors like pornography and masturbation um and i came to a very dark point in my life where i was trying to figure out how I can break free from these shackles, these chains, these habits. And I don't know how, but I somehow stumbled upon, maybe Googling how to be happy, on meditation. And lo and behold, long story short, the first time I meditated, my mind was crazy, right? I noticed that my thoughts were all over the place, but nevertheless, through persistence, through actually giving it a genuine effort, I found that I often felt a lot better a lot more at peace, a lot more happier when I did my meditation than when I played video games, than when I played or when I smoked pot and got high and did behaviors that didn't serve me. So the more I practiced meditation, the more my life changed and the more willpower and self-discipline I had. Uh, now, is that to say that I'm perfect and that I have uh, superpowers or, you know, super strong willpower and strong levels of self-control self all the time? No, definitely not, far from it. But compared to where I was in the past and where I am right now and where I'll potentially be, huge difference. And that's why I want to share with you today meditation. The one habit that I started in the beginning of my career besides exercising it was single-handedly the most powerful thing I did in terms of my mental, emotional state, my spirituality, and just developing awareness all around, okay? Now, I'm gonna be sharing with you five things today. I'm gonna keep it nice and short, or at least I'll try to as, as I, you know, have a tendency to talk on and on. But I'll keep it short and concise. Here's the thing. All spiritual traditions, at least the Eastern practices, point to consciousness, meaning that awareness behind your eyes, the sensation you feel in your body right now, that awareness behind the screen of your existence as the fundamental core essence of who we are, what we are, what we're made of, and the source of our being. If there is no consciousness, so to say, we can't exist, all right? Supposedly we can exist unconsciously, but as conscious beings, right, beings of consciousness, Consciousness is the source and the root of who we are. And meditation, the practice of developing your awareness, developing your consciousness, is connecting you with the source of who you are. And the stronger your awareness becomes, the more of the essence, meaning the more of God, the image of God, you were creating the image of God as a conscious creator, the more of this essence you have, the more of this essence you embody, the more of this essence you develop, the more conscious and powerful you become as a creator, right? You unlock all the higher levels of emotions like joy, peace, bliss, right? Tran tranquility, elevated sense of emotions because you are connecting with the higher components of consciousness, okay? The higher potentialities and capabilities that consciousness is capable of. That may be kind of a mouthful and kind of far up there with you, but I'll explain to you this, okay? The reason why strengthening your awareness, your consciousness, will give you higher levels of self-discipline and willpower is this, okay? Viktor Frankl, his book, Man's Search for Meaning, the guy who was supposedly in the concentration camps and survived, he said this, between stimulus meaning there's something that stimulates us and response, there is a space. In that space is our power to choose. In our response lies our growth and our freedom, okay? So I'll say it again, between stimulus and response, there's a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. In our response 
lies our growth and our freedom. Okay, that is very, very powerful. Now, I've said this before in my other mind programming videos and discipline videos. This is not easy, okay? Just because you are aware, meaning you are conscious of an emotion that's arising in you, a craving that is arising in you, a thought that is arising in you, like a bubble, even though you see it, even though someone does something that irritates the hell out of you, and you are aware of it, it does not mean you're a void of this emotion. It does not mean you don't experience this emotion. Just because you practice mindfulness, just because you practice meditation, just because you practice consciousness practices, does not mean you are exempt from these emotions. What it means is you're simply aware of them and you're able to detach yourself a little bit and give yourself space. Between stimulus, meaning the thing that happened to you, and response, the way you choose after you're conscious of that stimulus, there is a space for you to choose your response. There is a distance between you, consciousness, and the event that happens. And the more you develop your awareness, in my opinion and in my experience, the larger and longer that space is, meaning someone says something to you, instead of reacting out automatically, you observe that feeling coming up in you. I, I see anger, Urgh. instead of Urgh, and releasing and attacking them, you can say, ah, I see my anger. And even though I feel angry, I'm not going to express my anger because I've known that in the past when I express my anger, I say things that I regret or I say things and add to the field of the fire that simply does nothing but backfire, okay? So that's the first thing. And then also the second thing, okay? When it comes down to why meditation is the best thing to develop self-discipline and willpower is this. It increases the gray matter in certain areas of your brain, okay? Gray matter includes regions of the brain that involve muscle control, sensory perceptions such as seeing, hearing, memory, emotion, speech, decision-making, and self-control. So basically there's like gray matter within our brain that has specific functions depending on where that gray matter is. And through meditating, you can synchronize and build the gray matter so that your brain works more coherently, concisely, precisely, and accurately, right? It synchronizes in a way that gives you desired, desirable outcomes rather than acting on impulses or saying things without filtering it or, you know, doing things that just don't serve you, okay? So that's the second thing. And then number three, you have a stronger prefrontal cortex, right? Your prefrontal cortex is basically the executive center of your brain, right? Supposedly the seat of consciousness. It's where we can plan, where we can, you know, decide on what we want to do. It's where we make our judgments. It's literally located right here. And that's why when people meditate, they bring their awareness to the third eye, which supposedly strengthens your prefrontal cortex because you're becoming aware, right? Training your awareness. Training our awareness is like how we train our bodies through resistance training. Meditation is like calisthenics for the mind, okay? It's basically, right? Meditation for the mind is like resistance training for the body. That's, that's what happens when you develop your awareness through meditation. The same way you train and strengthen your body, the same way you can strengthen your prefrontal cortex, your awareness, the fundamental essence of who you are, which gives you ultimately more power to control your desires, your thoughts, your impulses, and your reactions, okay? Again, not easy, not easy. I want to really emphasize that. Which is number four, decreased amygdala activity. Basically, it's your emotional processing center, your amygdala, right? It processes emotions, right? It's a control of regulating fear, good emotions, negative emotions, you get the idea. The exact functions of the amygdala is still somewhat of a mystery, but the basic understanding is the amygdala regulates your emotions, and when you meditate, because you become more aware of it, there's decreased activity in that center of the brain, so you're less prone to fear or flight or flight or flight reactions, in other words, stressful responses. And then finally, last but not least, decreased default mode network. I know if you've done any research on meditation or looked into it, you probably heard this term thrown around a lot, 
But honestly, guys, I've heard this term before meditation got popular because literally I discovered meditation about 10 years ago. And meditation didn't start blooming until like five years ago, honest, honestly. I mean, it's always been around, but more people have been catching on to meditation more and more since the advent of technology because our minds are so crazy, our minds are so all over the place, and we want to find a way to tame it, right? Like a wild animal. And meditation was the only way that was uh, the most promising aspect of taming our mind, okay? And the reason why we have our monkey mind is because of the default mode network. Basically, the default mode network is the default that your mind goes into when it's not concentrating. Meaning, okay, lost in thought, conjuring up in imaginary scenarios, creating stress responses, producing negative emotions, interpreting events around you, interpreting things that are going on. Basically, activity of the mind, that is the default mode network, okay? Your monkey mind, right? It's constantly observing. Thoughts are constantly rising and it's being interpreted. But here's the thing, here's the thing. Through meditation, because you're training your awareness, you are strengthening, right? Or you're decreasing the activity in your default mode network. In some instances, you're even shutting it down. And then you're also decreasing activity to the amygdala, right? When you decrease activity to these centers, the more primal aspects of your brain and your mental emotional states, you are almost guaranteed more willpower and self-control because instead of reacting and jumping on every impulse, every craving, every thought, every desire that comes, you become more aware and you can see it happen, all right? Now, this is not easy for the third and final time because your willpower and discipline can be affected, as I mentioned before, by the foods you eat, the amount of sleep you get, the thoughts you think, the amount you move your body or don't move your body, the amount of breathing you have, and the amount of water you drink. All right, all of this could influence your physiology, your self-discipline, your willpower. So it's really, really, really important that you understand that simply by developing awareness or doing meditation, you don't become Superman overnight, but it gives you the awareness. Again, the precursor, the essence of our being, consciousness, to see all of this happening, right? Carl Jung, Carl Jung says, until we make the unconscious conscious, we will live the rest of our lives believing in those fate. Meaning if you aren't conscious, awareness of the unconditional, unconscious patterns running your life, because you don't meditate, you don't develop awareness, what ends up happening is that will run your life. And you won't know why you're playing the same habits and patterns if you don't take the time to hit pause, reflect, meditate, and see what's going on. So I hope that gives you a very clear picture of how meditation is the best way to develop your awareness, to develop your, uh, your self-discipline, and your willpower, okay? This was Kevin with Optimize Essentials. If you like this, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next ones. Peace.